this program to bring you a perfect step up in the booth i'm gonna kick it unscripted man's on the street it ain't coming from a distance cordy in the cup all the with the dd digs in the kick like the range only three feet yeah bars being thrown like a tomahawk swerving on the autobahn fast lane got him locked falling like a brother hit the park right on south street one three five finna skate when it grounds me any rivals house screaming you can't do that qb launching the leather just like a new strap you know that propeller levitating where the crew at pick up your remote and change the channel where the school at What up, T-Hawk Nation and C-Mass? He says C-Mass because we got C-Mass icon Carl Sutherland coming on the show today. Huge for the boys. Huge for the boys. And the girls. We got a lot of peppering Rabbit, questions for boys. him. Rabbit. Yeah, us boys and the girls. Everybody will definitely enjoy this interview. Uh, we're very happy to have Carl on today. Um, I, I think that's it. Let's get right into him. Carl Sutherland, here he is, folks. What's going on, CMAS and Algonquin? Matt Gregorio here, John Palomeros, Drew Courtright, and special guest today, Carl Sutherland of the Wizard Telegram and Gazette. Uh, big sports reporter, huge guy, sports guy, <laughs> football guy, everything. Household name around CMAS. Yeah, definitely. Uh, one, one in a million. Uh, so, Carl, uh, Matt Gregorio here. We're going to start off uh, talking about your recent rankings for the boys' top 10 for boys' basketball. Uh, you have Dory number one, Wachusa number two, Marlboro three, and Algonquin four. Go T Hawks. Yeah, T Hawks there at, uh, sneaking in those top four. Um, having Gonk having lost those uh, number two and number three teams, uh, but in competitive efforts, I can see how you put Wachusa and Marlboro definitely ahead of Algonquin. Just out of curiosity, I know Doherty's been hot as of late, but the T Hawks did knock off Doherty on opening night. Uh, just want to give us some insight on those rankings. Yeah, well, you know, I think. Um you know, there are the rankings, like one, two, three, four, but there's also groupings, too. And I think there's definitely, like, a, a top four probably out of, and are roughly interchangeable. Yeah. Um, you know, it just depends on who's got the latest big win or, or whatever. And, you know, Doherty is undefeated and I think, uh, 11, maybe 12 straight games now. Uh, they got... Possibly the best player in Central Mass and Marty Solero, which each of these top teams has a, a top guy. You guys have uh, Hendu and yeah, Hendu. Yeah, got him. Yeah, and, uh, and I also like Al. I like uh, Momo uh, for Doherty. He's yeah. he's a you know really athletic big guy. Um, so yeah, you know, it, it's really anyone's game when it comes to the playoffs and stuff. It's just a matter of Wachusett beat Algonquin recently, so that's kind of the what caused Algonquin yeah. to slip down my rankings. Yeah. And, uh, you know, Marlboro is good, has Chris Doherty. Um, Wachusett's good. They got kind of a big three like like Algonquin does. Uh, Doherty's good. So, I mean, it's really it, – you could look at it like Algonquin's ranked number four in my rankings, but another way you could look at it is that there are different tiers of teams. Um, I think maybe St. John's jumps into that group if they're able to get Tyler Mola back this yeah, season yeah, and yeah. he's able to play well. Is he coming uh, back? But yeah, there's who, a chance. He, he might. I, I've heard he might be back. Um, he's, you know, told me he's not exactly sure. But, uh, you know, if they get him back, I think they jump into that group and maybe it becomes, well, uh, Marlboro is in Division Two, I think, actually. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Um, maybe that adds... Maybe St. John's adds another, you know, team that could win the Division One title, and then usually you got a couple Eastern Mass teams now with the three uh, District in Franklin guys, teams like that. Um, but you know, I, I think it's really close with that top group of teams. Um, so I know some people were upset when I dropped Algonquin down to number four from I think I previously had the number one. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it's really close up at the top. It's really just there are, you know, four or five really good teams. Yeah, I like that. And uh, sticking with CMAS basketball, are there uh, certain athletes in basketball that stick out and who? Uh, yeah, yeah, there are definitely, um, you know, I mentioned Hendu is really, uh, there's some great point guards, and uh, he's, he's up there, one of them who can do it all, has, I uh, I love the way he plays all out, and uh, he's fun to watch too because he's got that three-point range that can go back, yeah. you know, five feet, five feet beyond the the three-point line. And then uh, yeah, I really enjoy Marty Silvera with Doherty too, who uh, yeah. you know um, 
can really take the you know the scoring load on his shoulders. He can kind of score in any different way, and he's he's a a really creative passer and can get get to the uh, get to the hoop kind of uh, with ease. Um, those are probably the I think maybe the two most exciting players in Central Mass. Um, I'd agree with that. Yeah, I, I think that is a very phenomenal. Like that's that's legit. Um, yeah, you, you got Chris Doherty too up at Marlboro, who yeah. uh, oh, definitely. can be a little hit or miss, but when he's on his game, I mean, that's a really exciting player. And then, yeah. obviously, St. John's kind of forced because of Mola's injury, but uh, Sean Burke has been uh, incredible yeah. this year. Yeah. So those are probably, you know, the, my two most exciting guards, two most exciting big guys uh, that I'd watch. And then one who you might, and he plays for a small school, so you might not notice him as much as Corey Olivier at Maynard, who uh, they could be back in the state final and we might not be talking about them until then. Right. But uh, I, I think he's he's really good too. Uh, yeah. So, you know, uh, that's kind of an under-the-radar guy who's also a, a, a top guard. I like that. Definitely. Yeah, and I definitely like Kyle Henderson out of that group. <laughs> Good stud. Uh, so, I got, a, I got a question for you. Um, I noticed on Twitter you, you put out your rankings and everything. And a lot of kids, a lot of kids chirp them, give trash talk tweets back. Uh, does this affect you? And like, what do you, what do you react to uh, when you get these chirp tweets? No, I, it doesn't bother me. I mean, I, <laughs> I, uh, I recognize that you know, I, I was a high school kid once too, and and probably would have responded not quite in the same words as some people, but. Uh, if I, Probably. If I didn't like the rankings, I might have said something too. But yeah. you know, I I try to base it off. I do research. Um, yeah. I I I wouldn't say I've seen every team in the top ten because it's just a matter of getting out to all those games. But I I have a good idea of you know each team's starting lineup, their strengths and stuff, especially the top five or or six. You know, the Division One, Division Two guys, and uh, so it, I I feel kind of. Like I've done the research, so I'm confident in the rankings. But I'm always open to when people make constructive criticisms yeah. and stuff. Yeah. Uh, the other criticisms, I just kind of brush off, I guess, because yeah. yeah. every year there's, I mean, it's like you know, every year there's someone. Yeah, oh, yeah. I, I get that. Yeah, and, uh, we like totally, it. we totally understand that. And and brick going, by brick guy. Yeah, and, he is a brick by brick guy. And going off this hate subject, is there a specific school where you get the most hate from, or you just don't pay attention to it? Uh, uh, Answer it honestly, because we're unscripted. Yeah, we're Everything unscripted. Goes. Yeah, we just go off. I I would say maybe Wachusa chirps the most. Okay. Right. Uh, Badlands. Gonk can be up there yeah, sometimes, yeah. Really cool. depending on the year. But uh, <laughs> you know, Wachusett's usually up there, and and you get some like random kids from random schools who want <laughs> <laughs> they want they want to get recognition, and and I you know I understand Nothing that. Like, that. It, but there there is a difference between a Division One school and a Division Three or Division Four. Oh, yeah, so, um, but yeah, yeah, probably Wachusett overall. I like that answer. Awesome, yeah. It's <laughs> there, there are plenty of, you know, I had some cousins at Wachusett, so I know they're, they're yeah. good people there also. Yeah, yeah. oh, course, definitely, definitely. Course. Yeah, we, we meet them all the time. They're some good kids. <laughs> Others not so much, but we'll continue to Mostly move on. Most good kids. I mean, majority, yeah, nine, major 99%. Yes. Yeah. And the others, you know, will grow up. So. <laughs> yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, continuing on this uh, basketball trend, Algonquin Girls Basketball has had some tough games as of late. I noticed they dropped out of the rankings, uh, which I think is probably pretty accurate for the most part. Um, but what do you see as, uh, as the playoffs are starting to come up on us, uh, their title uh, chances? I don't know about title chances, but, um, you know, I think it's tough because, as I mentioned, you know, there's a difference between a Division One schedule and some of the other teams who might be Division Three and be have one loss compared to Algonquin playing good teams pretty much every night or most nights. Um, so you know, I I think if you look at the schedule, you know, it's tough to beat Shepherd Hill or stuff like that. They're a great team, or Wachusett's a great great girls team this year, and um, so it's it's kind of just a result of Playing those, you know, Wachusett, Shepherd Hill, Lemons, all those teams on the schedule, those are tough wins. Yeah. So it's not surprising 
that they'd be around 500. Um, I honestly haven't seen the Algonquin girls play, so I don't know if they're, you know, developing and have. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't really know the team makeup, but you know, if you look at the results, their their losses are pretty much all to really good teams. So yeah. I, I don't hold that against them. No, you yeah. Know, and I agree. That it's been very accurate. They run similar to uh, what it be when before Demarcus Cousins came out. Uh, that New Orleans Pelicans twin tower uh, offense. So they uh, they always have two big men out at the same time. Uh, so I actually have a follow up question uh, relating to the entire the entirety of Central Massachusetts. Uh, who is your top football player this this fall? Oh, um, I don't know. I guess. You'd probably go with uh, with uh, St. John's quarterback Steve uh, Buchalia, yeah. who uh, you know was maybe the best quarterback in the state or up there. So, and they won a title. Um, so, I'd probably give it to him. Um, you know, uh, then you look at the you know there are a lot of good kids on each team. There's yeah. good defensive linemen. There's good running backs and stuff. Um, you know, I liked Tejon Vassar. I thought it was a really exciting running back. I thought it was maybe a little bit of a down year for running backs, where the year before you had some really, like, Cole McCubrey at uh, uh, West Boylston, Ifatu Moafanu, like yeah. kids that went Division One, And uh, so, but out of the running backs, Tejon Vassar, I think, was, was probably the, the most fun to watch. Okay, um, uh, sticking with this hockey and basketball thing, um, I feel like Gonk has pretty good teams in both sports. Yeah. Uh, who do you think uh, has a better shot at a state championship? Basketball, Gonk basketball, or Gonk hockey? Uh, probably say, probably say basketball. I mean, um, it's you know, like Shrewsbury ha has had these like wagon type of hockey teams where they're able to win state titles, but I think it's tough to uh maybe there's not a, a a team that i'm i'm not sure will go all the way in hockey this year uh maybe in the lower division you got the grafton bvt team that's been been pretty great yes. but uh yep. Yep. I think in terms of basketball you got you know three really legit players for for algonquin and uh you know hendu can go on he can drop 40 on you whenever he wants that's and then true. we saw it the first night at doherty yeah. What was that? First night of Doherty. Kyle Henderson dropped 41. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, I mean, he can go off, and then that's – it's tough when you got – you got to pay so much attention to Hendu, and then you got – so you can't really show too much attention either to Duffy or Redden. And so Redden, Redden will be back 100% soon. Yeah, I was just talking to him last period. He said his ankles feel much better. So, look for Nick Redden to be back very soon. And fun fact, uh, Kyle is actually around 40 points away from uh, the 1,000-point mark on his career. Yeah, that's huge. And, and in three years, too. People forget three years. that. People forget that uh, he never played freshman year. He didn't year. play freshman year. That's right. That's right. So 1,000 career points in three years is unbelievable. Um, John, do you All right, so uh, you talked about your, your uh, top 10 in basketball. Uh, can you run us through your top 10 in uh, hockey? Specifically the top three. Oh, in hockey, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. John's probably the top three. I'd say St. John's, then Shrewsbury, and then Algonquin. Uh, but you know, I think St. John's has had some pretty good results against like really good teams this year. So maybe they're to me probably the clear number one, especially since they beat Shrewsbury. It's pretty close between Shrewsbury and Algonquin, and then. Uh, yeah, you know, I think those are the, the top, definitely the top teams. And it's, there have been a lot of teams that have been up and down and stuff. Like, you know, they've lost, you know, three out of four and then won three out of four. Yeah. So, um, it, it, I guess it depends who's hot at the end of the season. But I think, uh, you know, Shrewsbury and uh, Algonquin both have pretty good shots, at least at district title. Uh, and to follow up to that uh, Shrewsbury SJ, were you at that Shrewsbury SJ game when they played? No, I wasn't. Okay. I don't really do much hockey. Yeah. Because we have uh, Chris Kine. Chris is Kine, a, yes. he's, he's a hockey coach, so yeah. he knows it much yeah. better than me. Yeah, definitely. And, uh, 
So he does mostly hockey, and, and me and guys like Tom Flanagan and stuff do uh, mostly basketball, yeah. um, which is okay with me. I mean, I grew up, like, I, I didn't play hockey. I, I watch it. I watch the Bruins and stuff. But I'd say I understand basketball much more intricately, so I, I'm, I'm happy with that setup, and I think Chris Kine's happy to be covering hockey too. But So, yeah, unfortunately, I haven't, I haven't seen Algonquin play this year. Um, but you know, I've all the results and, and, yeah, uh, who the top guys are and stuff like that, I guess. Definitely. Um, so I have a revs question now. Um, you recently went to Twitter about the New England revolution, uh, saying star, honestly, I or quote, honestly, I can't blame Lee Wynn, end quote. I just wanted to, uh, get, um, get your take on that little controversy with the revs top player. Yeah. Well, you know, um, I think. Lee Wynn has had a tough career and that he's always been kind of undervalued and uh, he's, you know, he's never been paid as much as I think he deserves. Uh, he's been a top player, but I don't think the Revs have fully, um, you know, went all in on putting a team around him. I, they did that one season when they got Jermaine Jones and they had a shot at a title, but since then they haven't made really huge any big moves to stay on par with other, you know, Toronto, Seattle, or now Atlanta is making yeah. big moves also. So yeah, I understand the frustration and he's getting toward the end of his prime and he's probably got, you know, one or two years left of being a, a top, you know, a big time star player yeah. who can help lead a team to a championship. And he wants good players around him, not to say there aren't good players on the revs, but they usually, uh, I think, you know, they, they're, they spend around probably the lower half of the league on salary, and yep. they don't use all their roster spots. I mean, there's definitely they could be doing more, and uh, they're kind of invest weirdly. They got Kai Kamara last season instead of improving the defense, yeah. um, which kind of even complicated Lee Wynn's job because they weren't really super compatible players. They yeah. did okay, but um, so I think Lee is just frustrated, and I. I don't blame him after it's been a frustrating couple of years for the Revs. Yeah, Kellen Rowe maybe a big step up this year, you think? Yeah, that's another guy where I think it's weird that, um, I mean, he's like a great, he can be a national team God, midfielder, yeah. and they were playing him at like left back and stuff last yeah. year. Just put him, like he's a great central midfielder, just put him in central midfielder, middle, central midfielder, find a way to, Fit him in somewhere, at least on the wing, up toward uh, you know a little where he can be dangerous. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's just been kind of a weird couple of years for the Revs. That's it. Kellen Rose, another guy where it's kind of like he's younger than Lee Wynn, but they're I, I don't know if I'd say they're wasting his prime, but they're using him kind of kind of weirdly. So uh, I mean, the Revs aren't in the worst position if they end up having to trade Lee because he just won't doesn't want to come back. Uh, they can, you know, Kellen Rowe is similar player. I think he prefers to play a little further back uh, in the field. Lee's more of a, you know, attacking, you know, right behind the, the center forward kind of player. And Kellen can be a little more long distance. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, you know, it's been a weird, the roster doesn't totally fit together perfectly. And I think there are a few guys who are frustrated about that. And um, But, you know, hopefully... For Kellen, he has a, a year where he can, you know, play to his strengths and, and uh, keep getting back in the national team and stuff. Yeah, they, that's perfect answer, Carl. Um, so we're going to get into a little hot seat right now. Not hot seat cool thrown yet. We'll finish off with that, but a little hot seat for you. Uh, just a few word answers. Uh, what, who's your CMAS football favorite for 2018? Um, you know, I guess probably St. John's. Yeah. I know they're losing a bunch of guys, but you got to – they're able to reload. Uh, I think Eamon Dennis is going to be a top uh, playmaker next year. And uh, also Doherty, I think, didn't graduate a ton of guys. They got their quarterback as a freshman. Vassar is going to be back. I think uh, Yeboa, um, Kevin Mensa's uh, younger brother, I think he's going to be back. So they got a lot of a lot of good players coming back. So Doherty could be a, you know, go undefeated or close to that next year, I think. Yep. And uh, putting you on the spot here, Henderson or Doherty? Uh, 
they're different players. So it's I guess Henderson's more consistent maybe, but um, like Doherty is more unstoppable. Right? Yeah. So I don't know. So but you're here it, first, Kyle Henderson over Chris Doherty. <laughs> Um, okay, so uh, I noticed you got some some long hair uh, or lettuce. Um, uh, how long have you been growing it out, and do you plan on cutting it anytime soon? Yeah, I'm probably going to cut it soon because, um, I don't know, my, my girlfriend had me experiment with the man bun thing. and Okay, you can't go wrong with a man bun. Yeah. I don't mind the way it looks now, but it, like... I guess you don't know until you try it. Exactly. Girl, I understand, but it kind of it like pulls back your ears, and it, it when you wear it all day, it kind of I don't know. It annoys me by the end yeah. of the day, so probably gonna go a little shorter soon. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But yeah, I've been growing it out for a while. I think my last haircut was uh, I don't know, like eight or nine months ago. It's a long time. Uh, one word answer here: Jordan or LeBron? Uh, Jordan. Sweet. Uh, like that. Um, uh, do we want to do uh, who won the 2017 NCAA football national championship? Was it Bama, UCF? Who was it? <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, I'm going UCF. I think UCF too, but. I'll go with UCF. Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I like Bama's that. Been there every year, so you got to spread around it. I think, you know, it would have been cool if UCF got at least a shot. Yeah. Uh, Super, Super Bowl prediction. Uh, Pats. Like that. Can I get Do you have a score? score? Yeah. Score? Uh, yeah. Uh, no, 31-24. Okay. Okay. Touchdown okay. game. Touchdown game. So, Pats. Yeah, I'll say, I'll say Brady comes back from a one touchdown deficit in okay. the second half. Okay. I like that. Okay. I like that. All right. So, uh, do you believe in love at first sight? A uh, little wild card. Well, <laughs> <laughs> no, somebody, but I believe you can be interested in someone at first sight. Oh, definitely. All right. All right. Uh, um, grittiest high school in CMass. Grittiest? Yes, yeah. the grittiest. Oh. Um, like the Worcester Public Schools, I guess. Okay. 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 I like that. That's pretty uh, good. North, South, Doherty. Uh, I mean, I like. I live close to Doherty. Probably North or South or the. Yeah, North. North. It, I'm thinking basketball teams, but they're you know I think. Inter high is pretty pretty tough. Yeah, definitely. Um, what's your next big vacation? Because I know you usually do a couple big vacations during the year. Yeah, um, not not sure yet, but uh, probably thinking about like Portugal wow, or something. I like it. Cristiano Ronaldo. <laughs> yeah. I like right. to go to Morocco. Um, yeah. Wow, big things for college for, Shuttle coming up next. Also, Colombia is on my radar. Wow. I think that's like a cool place to go to. Definitely. Uh, yeah, I try to try to get around. All right, let's get right. Uh, right. No, no, wait, 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 we have a couple oh, more, okay, a couple Drew. More. Uh, shampoo or conditioner? <laughs> oh well, um, I I condition every day, but I only shampoo like every other day. Okay, I like if that. If you dump on it, I think that's supposed to be healthier for your hair, and I got a lot of it, so I gotta <laughs> I gotta get it right. Yeah, yeah. I, might, I might start trying that. Yeah. Um, uh, so are you a? I'd call myself a football guy. Are you a football guy, soccer guy, hockey, basketball? What kind of guy are you? Uh. Yeah, I guess my the sports I follow the closest, or are I mean everybody follows like the Patriots, but in general the sports I follow the closest are probably uh, basketball and soccer. Sweet. Um, do you play Fortnite? <laughs> no, I don't know what that is. <laughs> Damn it! Right, it's, a, it's a viral game. All right, last question from me: most underrated food. Most underrated food. Yes. Um. Yeah, uh, well, can I take a whole culinary, yes. like, Yeah, cuisine? definitely. Yeah, so my, my girlfriend's from Greece, and uh, I didn't think of Greek food as, like, being on par with, I guess you'd say, like, Italian or other stuff, uh, but uh, it's really, you know, you gotta, you gotta try it out. Get a, get a gyro. I'm not, oh, okay. not a big fan of pronouncing it hero, hero, but uh, <laughs> just say it. 
gyro, but there's a yeah. good place in Worcester, Boomers, that has it. Okay. Uh, Boomers? Like the authentic Greek style. Okay. Um, also like also like Moe's Burritos on oh. Monday when they got the Ooh. discount. Yeah. So good. That discount <laughs> has become so clutch for me. Yeah. Um, yeah. All right, let's uh, get right into Hot Seat Cool Throne. Sweet. Uh, uh, do you want to go Hot Seats first? Yeah. John, you want to uh, start? Might as well. Uh, so my hot seat is uh, Philadelphia because uh, of Tom Brady's mic drop. <laughs> okay. That was electric. <laughs> he just uh, ended it there with his own mic drop. Carl, you want to go Hot Seat? Uh, I don't know. I didn't think of one, but all right, I'll, well, I'll go to. I'll get to <laughs> so mine. Carl's on the hot seat. Yeah, no, Carl. Carl, you can think of yours when we go Carl, to our hot seat. Carl's hot seat's yeah. on the hot seat. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, I'm putting Alex Reamer on the hot seat, as we all know. Um, yeah. He called Tom Brady's five-year-old daughter some words. Yeah, they were probably not, say. not nice. Yep. Um, or they were not nice. They but probably shouldn't say to a little five-year-old girl. And especially, especially, the, especially yeah. Tom Brady. <laughs> and uh, that's my hot seat. My hot seat is the NFL media. As everybody knows, last night was NFL media day, and it was a huge disappointment. Um, you have players not showing up for legitimate reasons, but also that NFL media did not take their job seriously. Sal Pal just walking around, like not even knowing where he is. Uh, that NFL and the media needs to step up their game for the rest of the week. Uh, Carl, you got a hot seat for us now? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I guess I'll say Tom Brady put himself on the hot seat on purpose okay. so that he motivated himself to win another Super Bowl with this whole Tom versus time thing. Okay. Out, I heard the final episode is coming out, like, yeah. the day of the Super Bowl. So he's creating, like, this whole should he have done that, should he not. So now he, he yeah. has to win. He, de he, has he definitely to win does. Bowl. He looks like a fool, I feel like, if yeah. he loses it and then kind of gets exposed with this whole Tom vs. Time thing. Definitely. Yeah. But uh, he did it to himself on purpose, I think, or true. Belichick tricked him into doing it Reverse to put himself, to motivate so, himself. Do so you think so, Belichick was behind Tom vs. Time? I don't know. I, I think Belichick, like, understands psychology better oh, than psychology. Does. Oh, definitely. My theory is that it was like a little ploy by Tom Brady to make Alex Guerrero look like the good guy. Yeah, maybe. And we're not talking about Guerrero anymore, that. that's for sure. Uh, maybe I I'll think maybe Tom was like, hey, Bill, I think I'm going to do this thing. And he was expecting Bill to be like, absolutely not. But Bill was like, oh, I like oh, that. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, go for it. All right, let's get right into the cool, cool throne. Uh, I, I'll go cool throne first. I'm going to go with malware bytes. If you have not heard of <laughs> malware bytes, they are what keeps your uh, computer from getting viruses. And so uh, as of late, uh, the public schools of North Borough, South Borough, Worcester, West Borough, Hudson, everybody has not really been getting school viruses. So malware bytes is definitely on the cool throne, keeping everybody's <laughs> computer information safe. <laughs> All right, I like safe. that. I like that. I'm going fedoras. Uh, Belichick rocked an awesome fedora at the uh, little send-off rally. I think it was electric. He said it was his dad's. We're going to just win the ball by 1,000 now. That was electric. Yeah. yeah. All right, my cool throne, uh, I'm going to go flannels. Uh, you see Carl and <laughs> Drew have flannels on. Uh, they're comfortable, and they look nice. Yeah. yeah. Classy. Uh, I my cool throne is Gonk Unscripted. I, think I like that. I love it. Get it on, and uh, thank you guys for Thinking. Thank, Thank you, Carl. You're, right. you're the man. Uh, All right, John, well, one last question for you that he asked. Uh, what are you going to eat for dinner tonight? Uh, well, I'm covering a basketball game, so I'm Maybe not going to have a But um, just whatever, if my girlfriend makes anything, or uh, I don't know. I like sounds that. like a girl, good girlfriend. It, right does, there. it does. Sounds like she's good. Carl, thanks for coming Carl, on. Carl, right, thank, thank you. you. We appreciate it.